Okay. Okay, so the, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, we have now today uh, Hiroki Sakura to, from Niigata University to talk about finite dimension approximation properties for uniform row algebras. Uh, thank you very much for agreeing to give this talk for us, and especially because of the ridiculous time change, uh, time difference. So thank you very much, and oh, well, very much. you you have the floor. Okay. And, uh, uh, thank you very much for introduction. Uh, let me start my talk, and I do, I would like to talk on uh, coarse metric spaces and uh, uh, uniform row algebras, and. Uh, uh, especially, I would like to pay attention on uh, finite dimensional approximation properties for uniform row algebras. And, um, and this is, a, uh, I listed five items, and this is a plan for this talk. And in the first section, uh, let me quickly uh, recall the definition of property A. Property A is an amenability type or a Fellner type condition, uh, uh, which is it was introduced by Goldie and you. And uh, he, he came up with this notion for his study for operator K theory and uh, his study on coarse BAM con conjecture. And uh, this talk is not so related to uh, course bound con conjecture or something like that, but uh, I believe it is somehow related to such kind of topics. And, uh, and then this property is related to large scale structures. Oh, Sako, just a second, sorry. Sorry for interrupt. Uh, I forgot to mention everyone that you made the, the PDF available in the chat in case ah, anyone yes. wants to follow. Okay, okay. I'm sorry for that. And, uh, I, I, I uploaded on the window of chat. And uh, I hope um, if you want to download this PDF file, and uh, uh, please look at the window of chat. Okay. And uh, uh, okay. In the se second section, I'd like to recall the definition of uniform row algebra, and some of you are experts on this algebra, but uh, let me quickly remind you. But, uh, in the, the third section is the main part of this, uh, of this talk. And uh, in this section, I would like to introduce uh, one theorem, and uh, which says that um, property A is characterized by uh, three finite dimensional uh, finite dimensional approximation properties, and uh, the and these three conditions are nuclearity, exactness, and the local reflexivity. And uh, I think local reflexivity is not so famous. Uh, so let me uh, briefly uh, recall the definition of local reflexivity for C star algebras. And uh, if we have, if we have enough time, uh, in the last section, let me uh, explain the outline of the proof of the main theorem in the third section. Okay. Let us start with the definition of property A. So let X be a, a metric space with bounded geometry. And, and the, uh, so uh, actually, this is not the usual metric space. We, uh, I would like to concentrate on the large scale structure on, the, on a metric space. Uh, so. The condition called bounded geometry uh, enable us to concentrate on the large scale structure of the metric space. Okay, so th this part is the definition of uh, property A. And, uh, 
if this condition is, uh, is satisfied, uh, x, is co it, a, x is said to have property A. So, so uh, there are several uh, quantifiers, but uh, let me explain. And uh, so the, the heart of this uh, condition is here. So let me explain this part first. And uh, here we have two metric spaces. One is a metric, fourth metric space X, and uh, the other one is uh, uh, unit sphere. This is the, actually the image is in the unit sphere on the uh, Hilbert space. Okay, and uh, the unit sphere of um, Hilbert space is a usual metric space, and the X is a coarse metric space. And, uh, and uh, this map satisfies uh, these conditions. And uh, R is uh, some const constant, and this is arbitrary. And uh, if, um, uh, let me pick up arbitrary two elements in X, if the distance between them is not so large, then the distance between two images is, is small. And uh, so this is the first condition. And uh, the, uh, for the second one, or well, the last one is, uh, says something like this. If the distance between two elements is uh, so large, then the images, uh, then the <coughs> images are perpendicular. So, so we have two structures. One is coarse metric space. The other is a user metric space. And uh, so, when we discuss coarse metric space, we pay attention that two elements are so far or not so far. If the the distance between them is not so large, then the images are close. And the uh, two elements are far from each other, then the images are perpendicular. This is the heart of the definition of property A. And uh, here we have two, three quantities. Uh, one is R, Second one is epsilon, and the third one is s. So, so let me pay attention on three uh, quantifiers, and uh, we can choose arbitrarily small epsilon and arbitrarily positive constant r. And depending on these two items, we can put uh, large. Uh, in many cases, this is large and uh, large S. If two points are large enough, then the images are perpendicular. So in a nutshell, um, property, if X has property A, we can understand, we can interpret the large scale structure on X in the language of uh, the usual metric space or Hilbert space. This is a uh, heart of Hilbert. Uh, it, this is the definition of property A. And uh, uh, let me make a comment on the definition. And, uh, and this is not the original definition of property A. This is one of the definitions uh, of property A for bounded um, for a metric space with bounded geometry. The original definition is given by some, some, some Frenner type condition. So let me go to the second section. Uh, 
let me define uniform row algebra. And uh, I, in my opinion, this is a, this is a kind of uh, linear representation or regular rep uh, linear representation of course metric space. So before defining uniform row algebra, let me define the, the technical term called finite propagation. Uh, in this definition, R is a positive constant. And depending on this constant, let me define an operator system inside uh, B of L2 of X. So this is a Banach space consisting of um, bounded linear operator acting on L2 of X. And this is uh, symmetric with respect to uh, a joint and uh, it contains a unit. And so the ER is uh, this, this subspace. And uh, this is a collection of bounded linear operator and uh, satisfying that if two points in X is, and the distance between them is larger than R, then the correlation or matrix unit, matrix coefficient uh, on X, Y, or Y, X, of A is zero. To imagine this condition, I draw some, some figure here. Uh, this is a figure of infinite matrix of A. I have two, I have a pair of uh, elements of X here. And depending on the choice of the pair, we have a matrix coefficient. And the, ma the matrix coefficient of A is concentrated on the, the, uh, this diagonal part. And so an element A of the union of ER is called an operator with finite propagation. So if we have a bounded linear operator, that the, the operator is called an operator with finite propagation when we have some constant R and the matrix coefficient are uh, concentrated on the neighbor, our neighborhood of the diagonal subset. So in this seminar, uh, I'd like to use e, uh, this notation ER several times. So, so uh, I hope you keep in, my, keep in mind, keep in mind this notation through, throughout this talk. So, uh, and uh, the operators with finite propagation forms an star algebra. So, and this is a star algebra acting on L2 of X. And uh, let me take the norm closure. And this forms an C star algebra. And this is, somehow famous algebra called the uniform row algebra of X. So, so many researchers are uh, pay, paying attention on this algebra and uh, they are sometimes, uh, they are often study studying uh, rigidity program and in other words, and they are trying to understand that uh, how much 
this algebra, remember the original SpaceX. So, um, so I first introduced the coarse metric space and define property A. Some space has property A and other spaces does not have property A. And uh, so um, I'd like to show you later that and uh, this uniform row algebra remembers the, the original space X and uh, which means that uh, the uniform row al algebra has finite dimension pro uh, approximation properties uh, if and only if and the original space has property A. So for, for the proof of the main theorem, and I, the proof is now heavily depends on the following characterization of property A. And, and the characterization is called the operator norm uh, localization property. So, so uh, I think this looks somehow technical, but uh, I like this characterization. And uh, so, uh, so let me introduce this. Uh, let me introduce this characterization of property A. So. Uh, in this page, A is an uh, operator acting on L2 of X and whose propagation is at the most R. And take arbitrary small uh, positive const uh, constant epsilon. So in, in this case, for, for general X and A, R and epsilon, there exists some unit vector in the Hilbert space L2 of X, such that the norm of uh, AXC, the vector AXC is almost the same as the operator norm of A. This is, and this is of course true for general case. For general X and general A and epsilon, we have such kind of uh, unit vector. And, uh, in this case, uh, let me say that the operator norm of A is epsilon almost localized on the support of if, uh, C. So in some case, this support can be big subset. Ah, uh, actually, for general case, we can choose QC such that the support is a finite subset of X. And uh, in some cases, the support, the finite subset uh, can, uh, should be big. And in some cases, uh, we can choose C such that the support of the support of C is small. But uh, if X has good property like property A, in such a case, we can control the diameter of the support. And this is the, the heart of operator norm localization property. And this is actually equivalent to property A. So let, let me see the defin, uh, formal definition of the operator norm localization property. So, this is the important point of the operator norm localization property. Uh, let us choose A with propagation at most R. And for A, we can choose a unit vector. I, I forgot to write here to the X is unit vector. Okay. 
uh, such that uh, the norm of the vector a x c is almost the same as uh, the operator norm of a, and uh, we can do such kind of c for general case. But the important point is uh, is the second uh, second one. The diameter of the support of C is controlled by some constant S. What is the constant S? And, uh, what is this? So this constant depends only on the, of course, space and the error term epsilon and the propagation R. Of course, the cho uh, choice of C uh, depends on the choice of A. But the size of the support is controlled by some constant. Okay. In, in such a case, we call that X. Uh, in such a case, uh, we say that X has the operator norm localization property. Uh, of course, we can choose arbitrarily small constant epsilon and arbitrary positive constant r. Uh, S depends only on the space x and the constant epsilon and the, the constant r. This is the definition. Uh, this operator norm localization property is a characterization of property A. And uh, okay, probably I made comment uh, about this. And uh, let me say it again. And uh, the choice of C, of course, depends on A, uh, but if X has property A or the operator non localization property, then we can put an upper bound S of the diameter of the support of X. So our main, and the proof of our main theorem heavily depends on this notion. The main theorem is the following. The following conditions are equivalent. The first one says that X has property A. This is equivalent to all of these three finite dimensional approximation properties for the uniform row algebra. And the first one is nuclearity, second one is exactness, and the third one is local reflexivity. And uh, the last one is the uh, operator norm localization property. So the equivalence between the first item and the second item is has been proved by scandalous Q and U. And uh, this is a famous result. And uh, I proved that the operator norm localization property is a uh, one of the characterization of property A. And by general theory of sister algebra, two implies three, nuclearity implies three, exactness. And uh, Kirchberg by, <laughs> uh, uh, by deep, uh, theory by Kirchberg, exactness implies local reflexivity. And, uh, and this implication is not so simple. Uh, this is difficult result. So, so we have already known uh, many implications among these five conditions. So, so, so to complete the proof, we, it suffices to show 
four implies five, uh, then we obtain the above theorem. Um, before going into the proof, um, uh, let me let me recall the definition of local reflexivity. Uh, I will not use this definition directly, but let me recall the origin. Uh, let me recall the definition. And, uh, a sister algebra B is said to be locally reflexive um, if the following condition holds. Uh, in, in the definition, uh, uh, we use the double dual of the sister algebra. And this double dual has a structure of von Neumann algebra. And the von Neumann algebra is called the, the universal enveloping von Neumann algebra of A. And uh, so we can regard this set, this space, uh, consists of linear operators. So uh, inside this uh, operator algebra, uh, which is arbitrary finite dimensional operator system, which means that uh, is, is closed and uh, taking a joint and it contains unit. For every choice of E, we have a net of contractive completely positive maps from E to A. A is a dense subalgebra of A double star. Uh, e is a subspace of uh, A double star, but uh, the, this map goes from E to A. And this net satisf uh, this net converges to the identity map in the point weak star topology or point uh, sigma weak topology. This is a definition of, of local reflexivity. Okay, and but uh, I, I don't use the, the definition of local reflexivity. Uh, instead of that, I would like to use two two conclusions, uh, two two features of this notion. Uh, let B and A is a inclusion of sister algebras, and uh, let us assume that. A is locally reflexive, then B is also locally reflexive. Uh, so, so local reflexivity uh, passes to subalgebras. Okay, the second one is more important. Let us take a uh, short exact sequence of sister algebras. These are sister algebras. B is a sister algebra, and J is an ideal of B. And the, let us take the quotient with respect to J. And assume that the algebra in the middle is locally reflexive. And then let us take arbitrarily a sister algebra C. And from this sequence, we have the following sequence of minimal, minimal tensor product. And if we have two sister algebras, 
we can uniquely de uh, define the minimal tensor product. And uh, taking minimal tensor product, we have a sequence here. In general case, this sequence is not necessarily exact, but uh, B, in the case that B is locally reflexive, then the, this sequence should be exact. This sequence must be exact. Okay, uh, I, I will use uh, these two facts. Kirchberg proved that exactness implies local reflexivity. So local reflexivity is uh, not uh, restrictive than exactness. Uh, but uh, I don't know deeply, but I guess the other, I, nobody knows the other direction. And do you have any question at this moment? After this page, I would like to explain the uh, uh, outline of the proof for, the, for our main theorem. I would like to explain the outline of the proof for this main theorem. But we have already known many implications among them. The, the only implication is uh, we, have, we have to show is from here to here. So let us prove that if the uniform row algebra is locally reflexive, uh, then X has to have operator norm localization property. So, the strategy is the, the, the core of the strategy is so simple. And uh, uh, we assume that two, two, two conditions. One is that X does not have operator non localization property. But the other assumption is that and the, the uniform row algebra is locally reflexive. And uh, let us deduce. A contradiction. So, so by by argument by contradiction, uh, we obtain that local reflexivity implies operator non localization properties. Okay. So this is a core of the strategy. So uh, let me explain outline of the proof. By the first assumption, uh, so this means that uh, X, uh, let us assume that X does not have the operator non localization property. So we need here some manipulation, but uh, please believe the following uh, conclusion of non ONLP. If X does not have ONLP, we can find a sequence of subsets, finite subsets. And actually this behaves like an expander. So and this is also an important uh, conclusion of uh, non-ONLP. If X does not have property A, then uh, the space does not have ONLP. 
And if x, uh, in the case that x doesn't have ONLP, we can find a sequence of uh, uh, final subset which behaves like an expander. Uh, uh, this sequence is not necessarily a sequence of ex, uh, expanders, but uh, it satisfies some relaxation or uh, generalization of uh, expanders. So, so we can characterize non-property A by existence of uh, some existence of uh, weaker version of uh, expanders. And this is a byproduct of this argument. So, and uh, on each finite subset, we can find a sequence of matrices A n. And this is a finite subset. So, L2 of Xn is, is a finite dimensional Hilbert space. So, X A and A n uh, is a matrix. And uh, A n is a positive definite uh, matrix. And, uh, uh, and uh, let us normalize the operator. That's that the operator norm or uh, the largest eigenvalue is one. So I don't write the the following condition formally, but uh, please catch the uh, please catch the important points by this description. And the operator norm of A is a summation of these matrix is not localized. Oh, I forgot one important point, uh, one important condition I forgot to write. And the uh, we can require that the propagation of A is uh, at most R. We can put uh, uh, uniform propagation for this sequence. Yeah. So, and then although A has finite propagation, but the operator norm of the sequence is not localized, which means that uh, to, to find QSI in L2 of X, uh, such that which almost attains the uh, uh, operator norm of AN, we need to uh, there is some restriction on such kind of unit vector. And uh, we need to choose such kind of unit vector uh, from Xn with large n. And the support of the, uh, when, we uh, when we find such, such kind of vector from large Xn, we need to choose a vector whose support is so large. This is the conclusion of the negation of ONLP. So let us replace the space X with the sequence. And uh, let us redefine the metric function on this disjoint union uh, such that the distance between two uh, disjoint component is infinity. So we, uh, by this procedure, we obtain a, a subalgebra of uniform row algebra. This is a, the algebra, the new uniform row algebra uh, is a matrix algebra. And uh, let us choose and fix the unit vector such that an xn is xn. This is a, an eigen 
vector for the largest eigenvalue. So, so and this procedure is somehow technical, but in my proof, it is necessary. So Cn is an element of L2 of Xn. This is a function on Xn. And I would like to embed this function into the function on the on x times x and uh, and uh, let us define large cn like this the support of large cn is the diagonal subset of xn times xn and the the the, the value is described by that of C, uh, small Xn. Okay. So by these vectors, we have two sequences of states. One is uh, one is given by Xn, and this is uh, these are states on the uniform row algebra. The other is, uh, I would like to call the other uh, states by uh, new n. And this is given by the diagonal vector. And this is a state on, on the C star ux, and it's a uniform row algebra, minimal tensor uh, with its opposite algebra. And this means that also actually this this algebra, this minimal tensor product act on L2 of X tensor L2 of X. So let us choose uh, accumulation points. And we need some another condition, but we can choose new and new. Uh, satisfying this condition. And uh, let us choose, uh, let us construct the GNS representation for the state new. And uh, a new, uh, pi new is uh, the GNS representation on the, the minimal tensor product. But uh, I'd like to pay attention on the representation of the first factor. Then we have a short exact sequence. And, and so let's, uh, let us look at this short exact sequence. The algebra in the at the middle has local reflexivity. So we take when we take minimal tensor product with the right action of the uniform row al algebra, we obtain another short exact sequence. This is the only part uh, we use local reflexivity. So, so by the trick in the textbook of Brown and Ozawa, we obtain a, a unit of completely positive map from the B of H nu. H nu is uh, the space given by the GNS construction for, for this state. So, and uh, the, the, the target of this UCP map is included in the, the von Neumann algebra uh, generated by, by pi nu of the uniform row algebra. Uh, so, 
So by this UCP map, uh, uh, we can use uh, techniques developed by Alan Kohn. And uh, he studied injective factors. In such a case, uh, this UCP map uh, is onto surjective. But uh, and this file, I don't know uh, this file is subjective or not, probably not. But uh, we don't, uh, I don't need uh, subjectivity. The only, the only condition I need is that uh, the restriction of phi to the, the sister algebra is generating sister algebra is the identity map. So this is, uh, this is um, weak expectation, weak conditional expectation. So, so <laughs> too technical, so let me omit the part in here. In, in this part, uh, I, I, I paid attention on the L2 of uh, L infinity X or L infinity X times X. Inside, inside uh, on this Hilbert space, the GN, GNS Hilbert space, uh, I, uh, I constructed the uh, representation of L infinity space. So in the L infinity space, uh, I could find some inver something like invariant me. So using such kind of uh, invariant mean, I could prove that for infinite many n, uh, mu n, and this is not a new n, uh, so by technical uh, argument, uh, we can deduce some conclusion on mu n. Mu n is the original state on the uniform uh, row algebra. This is a this is not the uh, diagonal uh, state. Uh, uh, mu n is constructed by diagonal uh, vector, but mu, mu n is the original one. And uh, so this state are approximated by some vectors such that uh, vector states and the vector, we can choose such kind of vector such that it has finite propagation. So, so finally, we obtain that the original state given by the, the, the I, uh, eigenvector with uh, eigenvalue one by this kind of zeta, zeta n. Zeta n is a vector whose propagation is uniformly bounded. So, so I can finally deduce contradiction because this uh, approximation means that the operator norm of a n is lo uh, localized on some small ball. Small means that the, the diameter of the, this uh, this region uh, this region is uniformly bounded. It does not depend on the choice of a, n. So I could deduce uh, a contradiction. In this proof, I use two two assumptions. One is local reflexivity. I use here, and in the first part, uh, I constructed n for the construction of for a n and c n. I use the negation of operator non localization property. So I conclude. Uh, let me conclude that local reflexivity implies the operator non localization property. And I have already proved that the operator norm localization property implies uh, op uh, property A. So the local reflexivity implies property A. 
So, uh, so let me stop here. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you, Saku. Thank you very much for, for your nice talk. Thanks for, thanks for that. Uh, do you have any questions for Saku? Any questions for Sarko? If not, then uh, would you mind uh, saying a little bit about the too technical part, or it just it gets uh, way too technical and okay. nothing can be said? Okay. Okay. Um, I think for this short talk and. Uh, it's very hard to imagine what is new and new, but uh, uh, these are limits of mu n and new n. And, uh, let me use the uh, web camera and let me stop uh, uh, using PDF file. Okay. So the assumption always oh, my face. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't need my face. Okay. The assumption is Something is wrong. And uh, assume that X does not have an NLP. In this case, inside of X, there is some subsequence or finite subset. Uh, or this is. Uh, this subspace is something like expanders. So, and the, okay, and the, So the original uniform row algebra contains a matrix algebra. Inside of this algebra, we can construct a new so uh, by redefining. The distance function b and uh, on the DNS space h new and uh, we can we have some a representation of L infinity x n square to B of H nu. So 
this is a kind of invariant mean. And this is <laughs> and, uh, another key step which I can I cannot explain on the PDF file. So I, I don't want to make my talk to be uh, technical. No, so <laughs> let me stop here. That's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any other questions for Sako? Okay, uh, if not, then I'm just thank the speaker again. I, I don't I don't know if someone, I heard some noise. Sorry, I don't know if someone was going to say something. No, okay. Uh, if not, then just thank, thank you, speaker, again. Thank you very much for agreeing to give this talk and especially for the time once again. Uh, I hope you can go back to bed <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, and it was very nice meeting you. Let me stop recording here. You on some occasion. So, bye.